Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to do a quick review of the new QHY Q Focuser. A few weeks ago, I watched a video presentation of this product by Cuivre de Lazy Geek. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it right here. When I saw that video, I thought that this was a cool product, but other than that, I did not think that much of it. However, a couple of weeks later, I put a ZW EAF on my new ASCAR 151PHQ refractor. And while it worked beautifully, I noticed that I would no longer be able to fit the telescope in its carrying case with the EAF attached to it. That is because the body of the EAF is a bit too long and the carrying case is a bit too narrow. By the way, I really don't understand why the body of the EAF is so long. If you crack it open, you'll see that it's mostly empty. Anyway, this was a complete deal breaker for me. But then I thought about this new focuser from QHY. I looked up its dimensions on the QHY website, made a few measurements, and realized that it would fit in the ASCAR 151PHQ carrying case with about 5mm to spare. So I went ahead and ordered the standard version of this focuser from Agena Astro. Not just because they are my favorite Astro retailer, but also because they had it in stock. I paid full price for this item, so this is not a sponsored review. I literally bought this focuser out of necessity. Nevertheless, I will put an affiliate link to this product in the description below. Feel free to use it if you want to support this channel. Alright, so I will spare you the unboxing and the installation of this focuser. You can watch Creve's video if you're interested in those. What I want to talk about today is my experience with this little focuser and the issues that I have encountered so far. So let's get started! Once I had the hardware and the software installed, I connected the focuser in Nina and tried to move it by a small number of steps. The first thing I noticed is that the steps of this focuser are incredibly small. For comparison, 10 steps on this focuser equal about one step on the ZW EAF. So to see any obvious movement, you have to move the focuser by like a thousand steps. Then I figured out that I had to check the reverse direction option in the focuser driver settings dialog so that the focuser would move in the right direction, basically outward when you increase the number of steps. Once I was able to see it move and in the right direction, I realized two things. First, the focuser was producing strong vibrations. And second, it was moving incredibly slowly. I am familiar with stepper motors, and I know that they produce vibrations when energized. And by the way, that is the reason why I de-energize the stepper motor in the firmware of my OEG focuser. I'll put a link to that part of the firmware code in the description below if you're curious. But these vibrations felt much stronger than they should have. Then I enabled the high speed option in the driver settings dialog. And not only did the focuser move at what I would qualify as a normal speed, it was also vibrating a lot less than before. It felt like a ZW EAF at that point. So my first recommendation is to enable the high speed option. I would also recommend to QHY that they change their software to make that the default and give the user the ability to enable a slow speed option if they really wanted that. I don't know why anyone would want such a slow speed to be honest. Next, I realized that the focuser was not updating its position while moving. So if you move the focuser by a large number of steps, and it might take a minute to move to that new position, an application like Nina, which pulls the driver every second, will keep showing the same position until the focuser has stopped moving. Only then will the position be updated. So this is not a huge deal, but getting live feedback on the position of the focuser while it's moving is something I got used to with the EAF. And if you operate your gear remotely, I'm sure you like to receive that kind of feedback. Again, if you check out my OEG focuser, you'll see that it also supports querying the position while the focuser is moving. To enable that, I had to structure the firmware code a certain way, but it certainly was not that complicated. And that is something I would expect from QHY. Then I tried to set the focuser limits. So I set the zero position, 
that's easy. And then I moved the focuser outward to determine the maximum step value, knowing that the focuser on the ASCAR 151PHQ can be extended about 108 millimeters. The Q focuser stopped at 100,000 steps and refused to go any further. That equates to about 35 millimeters of travel for me, which is clearly not enough. So I opened the driver settings dialog and noticed that the step limit was set to 100,000. I tried to bump that up, but unfortunately the user interface wouldn't let me do that. And that is the biggest problem I've encountered with this focuser so far. Thankfully, I found a workaround. It's a bit clunky, but let me show you anyway. We are going to use an application called Profile Explorer, which ships with the ASCOM platform. So locate a file named profileexplorer.exe. It should be under C, Program Files x86, ASCOM, Platform 6, Tools, profileexplorer.exe. Go ahead and launch it. In the left pane, locate the key named Focuser Drivers. Expand it, and you should see a key named ascom.qfoc.focuser. Click on that. Now, in the right pane, you can see all the options for the QFocuser ASCOM driver. In particular, you can see the step limit option. Double click on the value and set it to 1 million, for example. Then in Nina, or whatever application you use, disconnect the device if you were previously connected and reconnect to it. This is because the driver reads the settings stored in the ASCOM profile only at the time of connection. Now you should see the new limit and you should be able to go beyond 100,000 steps. However, note that you will no longer be able to use the driver settings dialog because it validates the step limit configuration against a hard-coded value of 100,000. This is really unfortunate, and while I think very highly of the hardware produced by QHY, I think that they did a pretty terrible job with the software. Thankfully, software is much easier to patch than hardware. I filed a ticket with QHY, and they have acknowledged the issue. I hope that they provide a fix for this very soon. Only then will I be able to recommend this product, so stay tuned. By the way, it's entirely possible that by the time you watch this video, QHY has already patched this issue. So keep an eye on the comments below. Hey, this is Julian from the future. I just received an email from QHY and they want me to test a new version of their ASCOM driver where they bumped the hard-coded limit in the settings dialog UI to 1 million steps. So I will try it out as soon as I get a chance. And if QHY makes this the new official version of the ESCOM driver for the QFocuser, I will report back by posting a comment below. It's great that QHY is reacting quickly and listening to customer complaints. On the other hand, they have not yet implemented any of the other enhancements I suggested to them. I hope that they do because I think this focuser has a lot of potential. All right, back to the review. I measured the backlash of the Q focuser attached to my ASCAR 151PHQ using a dial gauge, and it came to about 350 steps, which in absolute terms is roughly a quarter of that of my ZWEAF attached to my Astrotech refractor. In general, backlash is not much of an issue because it is easy to deal with in software, as long as it's just not a gigantic amount. The backlash on this little focuser is very small, which is great. One last thing. I connected the temperature sensor and observed the temperature reading. It feels a lot less jumpy than that of the EEF, although that may just be because it rounds the temperature reading to a tenth of a degree. So if you want to use focuser temperature compensation, I still recommend using my virtual focuser driver which averages the temperature readings over a two-minute sliding window, and that makes the value a lot more accurate, which is essential for focuser temperature compensation to work well. So, in summary, I really like the hardware, and once QHY has patched the software and the firmware, this little focuser will be an amazing piece of kit. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this video was helpful, if you like this kind of content, please click like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support the channel, 
please use one of the affiliate links I put in the description below. I'll be back in a few weeks, so until next time, thank you for watching.